Welcome to the very first edition of this video series. What I want to do with this is I want to introduce some of the UAS news that happen every week and on Fridays basically create a video and tell you guys about everything that's new in the drone industry. So I haven't found a name for it quite frankly, but there's some really exciting changes that happened um, in the last couple of days. And so I want to talk about those. And uh, there's going to be about two or three topics every week. And this should be able to help you stay up to date with all the information and all the things that change in the drone industry, which, as you know, changes very quickly. Now, the first one is a restriction that the FAA has put in on drone operations near any kind of U.S. Navy vessels or uh, U.S. Coast Guard vessels. So. What you really need to know about this is that there's no drone flights alone in an area that is 3,000 feet laterally and 1,000 feet above any U.S. Navy and U.S. Coast Guard vessels. Okay. Now, this new airspace is classified as what we call national defense airspace. And then a lot of information for this comes from uh, 14 CFR port 91.7, which is something that has to do with uh, special security. Now, there are more agencies that are expected to be added to that list. So when that does show up, I will let you guys know and I will add it to the list. Now, in the meantime, there is some information that you can find down here. Looking at the FA website, they have an article talking about the news and talking about more detail. You can also go, there's a NOTAM that highlights everything in all the details, which is NOTAM FDC 8-2314. If you don't know how to read NOTAMs, uh, I recommend that you get familiar with this. This is something that's very important and all the information is in there. The next big news is that more than 100 control towers have been added to the LANS program. Now, the LANS program is something that is being used by remote pilots uh, under Part 107 in order to get authorization to fly in controlled airspace. Now, as of last week, this is also something that a hobbyist will have to request authorization through in order to fly in controlled airspace. Now, the, the system is not designed just yet for hobbyists to submit their activities in there. So um, for now, uh, uh, hobbyists need to stay away from flying in controlled airspace. I'll talk a little bit about this at the end of uh, this new segment. So starting in May 23rd, they added over 100 new control towers and airports to Lance. And you can actually find the list of Lance approved facilities by going to the U.S. facility map. And uh, the U.S. facility map will show you basically different um, different colors. So a green color means it is lens approved. A red color means it's still not approved and you have to submit any of your requests through the uh, official FAA Drone Zone website. Now, again, there's some sources here that you can follow if you want to find out more information. There's a whole list available on the FAA website. I'll put a link in the comments where you can find all of the different um, airports that belong to Lens. The next real big thing that happened recently is that the FAA decided to start applying some of the changes from the FAA Reauthorization Act that was passed in 2018. And these first batch of changes um, apply to Section 349. Now, I have a whole video talking about this that you can go and visit. I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, this is more than just a few minutes of talking about Section 349. But there's basically eight different uh, points, bullet points, that the FAA is going to be making changes. There's still two of them that are not implemented. The biggest thing right now, the biggest take back from, from this uh, new batch of change as of May 2019 is the fact that drone pilots at the moment are not allowed to fly in controlled airspace unless they fly at an approved site. It's called a fixed site. It's basically um, a site that had a CBO, uh, a community-based organization. And uh, you can find a list of these sites, again, on the UAS facility map. Uh, they're going to be located with a little blue circle. Again, head out to the video if you want more information on this. But know that there are some major changes for hobbyists, for recreational pilots. So if you are one of those, make sure that you uh, get up to date on the regulations so you don't get in trouble. The last topic I want to talk about today is the fact that DJI released their new program called AirSense. Now, this is more of an introduction to the idea of AirSense. There's two platforms right now that do have access to AirSense. But basically, by 2020, DJI has committed to installing ADSB technology. Now, if you're not familiar with ADSB technology, this is something that um, a technology that's going to be available for manned aircraft primarily. This is what it was designed for, and that sends information to a base station, which then broadcasts this information to all the other aircraft. What it is essentially, it's basically telling all the other aircraft that 
your location, your altitude, and your direction of flight so that other people can see you on their display if they have the technology available and um, basically creates a safer traffic. Now there's two types of ADSB. There's a, what we call ADSB in, which is where you receive the information that's broadcasted, and an ADSB out, which is the technology that broadcasts your information. Now ADSB out will be required by the FAA by 2020 for all manned aircraft that want to fly in controlled airspace. But in the meantime, DJI has said that they would put the uh, ADSB in the technology that received the information in their drones by 2020, which is basically going to allow you to display uh, uh, manned aircraft traffic in flight on your tablet and on the device that you use when you fly, which is great. I think this is a great idea. This is a great way to help people understand that there is other uh, traffic in the airspace and then allow you to basically drop the drone a couple hundred feet if the traffic becomes a factor. So. This is great. Uh, this is, I think, a great step. I, I hope more manufacturers actually follow the lead and do the same thing. DJI at the same time has also released what they call their Elevating Safety. It's a white paper. I'm going to put a link so you can go and read the white paper. It's a couple, uh, I think it's a dozen pages. And uh, the idea is they highlight a 10 point plan for uh, the future that they want to put in place. And the idea is, and I'm not going to go over every single one of the points, but the first one is to include AirSense, their technology, their ADSB technology on all their drones by 2020 and to create a process that uh, is going to warn pilots that something is about to happen and a traffic is about to be a factor with their flight. The other thing that they highlighted in there that I think should be pinpointed is the fact that they want the industry to get together to create a set, a set of uh, safety standards, which I think is very important. Uh, coming from the man pilot industry, I think this is something we've seen with um, with uh, safety management systems, for example, where we have a set of guidelines that are being followed. I think this is very important for our uh, industry as well to, to put in place. And uh, this is something that they're encouraging here. They're also encouraging the government to get more involved. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but um, at least the one point that they make is that uh, they should enforce the rules that are currently in place, which I think is something that the FAA is, uh, is missing on at the moment. We have all these rules that we have to follow, but not always they are followed on. So uh, you can read the 10 points if you download the white paper and you can see where uh, DJI wants to take this industry. I think they're taking a leadership position, which is great. Uh, somebody has to do it. They're one of the biggest manufacturer out there, if not the biggest. And um, and it will be interesting to see the, the changes over time. So take a look at this paper if you're interested. And this is it. This is all the updates for today. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next week for another uh, new segment. As always, please subscribe. Um, I will have more videos. Uh, I just have actually a brand new uh, studio that I just built and uh, I will plan on doing way more videos now that I have a permanent setup. So expect more from me, expect to see my face a little bit more. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, any feedback that you have, please leave it in the comments. I'm always uh, interested to see what you guys think. And uh, if you wanna see changes or if you wanna see topic covered, um, I'm here to help. I wanna help this industry. So. Uh, see you guys next week.